Hey guys, it's Summer Rain, and I can't believe it, but it is the 15th episode of Plant One On Me. I don't know where the time is going. I think I'm also approaching like almost the 50th post on homesteadbrooklyn.com as well. Um, so if you haven't checked out the blog, please do, because I try to go a little bit more in depth in the blog post there. And um, yeah, I only launched it in February, so there's a lot of content up there, and um, and I'm happy to continue to be getting all your questions. I think for the 15th episode, I'm going to concentrate on bugs, on, on bad bugs and on good bugs, because I've had a lot of questions about bugs, and you know, maybe it's coming out of the winter months and getting into spring, and there's a more proliferation of bugs on the new growing areas in your plant. Um, I'm not sure, but we're gonna kick it off with Jay Killikarth's question. Oh my God, if you could do a video on how to get rid of mealy bugs, I would so appreciate it. Okay, so mealy bugs you may or may not have seen because surprisingly, they are uh, a cottony looking scale and type of insect that it doesn't really move once it plants itself into a specific place, it just starts to suck the plant juices out. And um, you would think that they're very easy to see, and they are if you actually look at a particular plant, but they they do very hide extremely well, like in the, in like the, the crotches of the tree or the plant. <coughs> they tend to like succulents as well. So I am nursing back a sick Hoya who it kept on looking a little um, shriveled. And I'm like, geez, you know, when a succulent is looking shriveled or if a cacti is looking shriveled, oftentimes it just means you're not giving it enough water. So I didn't really look at the Hoya, so I just gave it a little bit more water. It is in, in south facing window. And I looked a little bit closer and I saw that eventually, like the following week, and then I saw that it had mealybugs. So again, these are these white cottony-like scale insects that could proliferate um, pretty rapidly onto a plant and just suck its juices out and make it look a little sad or sickly. And you know, you could, you could take a little bit of hydrogen peroxide on a Q-tip and just uh, clean them off with that and they'll, they'll give you a little like orangey um, stain on the q-tip so if you have a small plant and a small infestation I would encourage you to just do that because what I'm about to tell you <laughs> you may not like um, I don't use any type of pesticide or insecticide on my plants I mean part of it is because one, I like to keep a really pure house, but secondly, I um, raise exotic insects and I feel like any type of insecticide or pesticide in the house is just going to destroy them. And um, so I always try to play it safe. That being said, going back to my former entomological roots, I do like to have a little bit of insect warfare. So. Um, what I do every month is actually bring in green lacewings, which is a type of Neuroptera. It is an excellent insect native to the U.S. and therefore if it becomes an adult and it flies out the window, so be it. It's not a big deal. Um, and they basically eat, they're great generalists. They'll eat anything. They'll eat mealybugs, they'll eat scale, they'll eat aphids, um, they'll eat spider mites. I had a um, I have a question actually from Barbara1001 on her plants suffering from spider mites regularly and what do I do to remedy that? So Barbara1001, I will get to you in a second, but let's start start talking mealybugs. So generalists, green lacewings, awesome. I'll show a flash a little picture up there of what a lacewing looks like, an adult. Um, they're also known as aphid lions and boy, does, do they really live up to that term? Because they are ravenous and they will decimate aphid populations. Um, as far as aphids, I think that was a question that I had in, in a subsequent um, or a previous uh, video. And what I do with aphids and most bugs in general is that I will take my hose and really spray hard, like the best sort of ability for you to do that is spray hard with water first, 
And then I do a monthly delivery of green lace wings. I release them. Um, I do the, the um, I don't do the adults, but I get them in, I'll send you a link of like where I, where I get them. I get them in this like, uh, kind of like this grid. And then I basically release them on the plants and they pretty much stay on your, your plants. And then they'll just, they're kind of like my mini soldiers. So if I have a plant and I see an infestation, of course I'll pull that plant away from the other plants, but I don't kind of freak out any longer if, if something is infested with mealybugs or what have you, when I know that I have a lacewing delivery coming up. Um, secondly, so the, there's two things just to summarize because I think that was all over the place. To summarize, you could do a little hydrogen peroxide on a Q-tip if you have a small plant and you just want to dab it. And then I would say check it um, every other day or check it weekly if you don't have a lot of time. And then just make sure that there's not another outbreak because insects, they'll have babies and then they'll, you'll think they'll, they're gone after you, you decimated their population and then all of a sudden their life cycle will start up again and you'll notice a bunch of, um, a bunch of new ones. So, that's probably the best way for mealybugs. The other way that I have, and I had fun doing this, but I kind of just do green lace wings now, is mealybug destroyers. And they are, as their name suggests, destroyers of mealybugs. They're also called crips. And they look a little bit like a black ladybug. Actually, they are in the ladybug family. And um, you release them as adults. And I found that couple different things. If you get the mealybug destroyers, don't wear white. They are attracted to white and they will be attracted to you. Um, put them right near the general vicinity of where the mealybugs are and they will go to town on those mealybugs. If you don't put them in the general vicinity of where the mealybug is, then they're probably not going to find it. And I do notice that mealybug destroyers like ladybugs are very much attracted to the light in the home so they will flock to the windows so i found when i got mealybug destroyers again one of the the downsides although i don't know if this is downside because i don't actually mind doing it but in the morning you'll see a bunch of mealybugs on the windows so i just literally take a little business card and i scrape them off and i put them back onto the leaves where i know the mealybugs were but it's a lot of work it'll take like a half an hour out of your day which most of us don't have so I would suggest lace wings. And I'm sure there are a lot of other pesticide options that you could do, but I personally wouldn't do them, so I'm not gonna suggest you to do them, especially if you have animals or if you raise exotic insects, if you have children around the home, you might not wanna spray that kind of stuff. I know that some people have used neem. Um, I. I've used neem like once in a blue moon, but I just find that the insects, uh, the beneficial insects are the most effective. All right, hope that helps Jay Killicarth. The next question is from Barbara1001. My plants suffer from spider mites regularly. What remedy do you use for that? So oftentimes plants will get spider mites because there is a dry condition in the house and the plant might be struggling. So I had one plant um, in my house, actually two right now, that are kind of infested, or one had been infested with spider mites, one I'm working on. And uh, it's my, my Sanchezia, which I've kind of really nursed back to health, and it drinks a ton of water. It's one of those plants, kind of like a Spathophyllum wassilii, where if you don't water it, it starts to look really sad but it doesn't have the type of rebound potential as a spathophyllum does. So I think one day, whether I was traveling or not, my Sanchezia got really dry and then I came home and it had an outbreak of spider mites. So spider mites love dry conditions. One of the ways that you could get around that is again, using, I used sharp sprays of water first and I also put on the humidifier. Um, in that room. And so just to get that humidity back up because spider mites don't like the humidity, they prefer those dry conditions. Then I would shower the plant and then again, sharp sprays. Then I brought the green lace wings in and the green lace wings completely decimated the spider mite population. I mean, I, I actually wish I have footage of this with like a really good macro lens of like the lace wing going at the spider mites because I, 
I have to tell you, I mean, this plant was infested. I mean, some people probably would have like put it out the door. I mean, it was literally infested with spider mites. I think that they just, um, you know, had a reunion or something on this plant. And I, I want to tell you that within 48 hours, the lace wings completely decimated the, the population of spider mites. And um, they were all very fat and happy and then became adults afterwards and were flying around the house. So um, I would highly recommend, again, green lace wings, uh, order Neuroptera and uh, also known as aphid lions. All right, Mrs. Cleric says, I would love to hear your remedy for gnats. Okay, gnats and fungus gnats in particular, I think are the bane of a lot of people's existence because I'm getting a ton of those questions. I'm sure, Ms. Cl Mrs. Cleric, that you're not the first one to ask this question. Um, I don't have all the other folks who have asked it, but it's a moot point at this stage because I'm about to answer it. Oftentimes I find that fungus gnats are attracted to really rich, moist soils. So when I get a compost bag in, I get the sense that there is somehow gnat eggs in it because as soon as I open it up, I feel like there's flies flying around. The other place where I had a tremendous amount of gnats was when I was growing my own mushrooms, edible kind, not the psychedelic kind, um, in the house. Um, all that like rich composty bed of uh, wherever the hypha and the mycelium was growing off of uh, just attracted fungus gnats to no end. And I tend to get them not in the winter months, but just kind of in the spring and the summer months. And they breed like crazy. And they really aren't going to severely affect your plant. They're just flat out straight annoying. So the best way that I've found that literally kills them within 24 to 48 hours is something called mosquito bits. It's made out of BTI but Bacillus thuringiensis or something along those lines. It might be mispronouncing it a little bit incorrectly. But um, BTI is a type of bacteria and it only affects flies. So if you have standing water outside in a bird bath, for instance, and you have a lot of mosquitoes or if you have flies or any type of thing that, that's in there, you could just drop BTI. It's completely fine for you to eat, for any birds to eat. It's just going to affect flies. So what I do is actually take the mosquito bits. I don't know if I have them. Let me see if I have them and I'll, I'll be right back. Okay, I cannot find them. This place is like a black hole sometimes. I put something somewhere and then I completely lose it. Um, it actually might be outside, but I'm not gonna go outside to, to look for it. But um, you know what, I will, hold on a second. I'm glad I did go outside. Okay guys, here it is, mosquito bits. Um, yeah, this is what it is. So what I do is actually soak this in water and then I use that soaked water to water the plants. And um, yeah, you're not gonna have any fungus gnats anymore. What can I tell you? It's, um, it's extremely effective. You might have to wait a day or two, but um, use this that you could get it in like sticks you could get it in like little round circles and um i've never seen it as a, a soluble material so but i'm sure it exists out there uh but yeah fungus gnats no more again highly effective it's a biological agent much in the same way that the green lace wings um, are a biological integrated pest management solution I think that this is the best way, especially for growing food, um, because you don't want to you don't want to spray anything on your plants that is going to be detrimental to to your health or anybody else's health. Um, so so just just do it the right way and the good way and the effective way. All right, hope that's help helpful. So yeah, so we went through spider mites, we went through mealy bugs, and we went through fungus gnats. So I think that's all we have for today because. That was a big episode for episode 15. So if you haven't yet, follow along at on Instagram at Homestead Brooklyn. And if you haven't yet, tune into the blog at homesteadbrooklyn.com. 
And I should share that I am doing workshops, all different types of workshops. So if you're in New York and you're interested, I'm doing Houseplant 101 um, and, uh, and Herbs Three Ways, um, indoors on your balcony and in a regular raised bed or garden outdoors. And I'm doing a photo porn garden tour in, in Williamsburg, Brooklyn with the Apple Store, which is totally cool and a bunch of other great workshops as well. So you could tune in there at homesteadbrooklyn.com slash workshop. So thanks again, guys. Keep your conversations um, flowing and your questions coming and I will tune in with you later. Bye.